The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name's Mike, and today we're going to be giving Rob a makeover. So, Rob's kind of iconic of Nintendo in the 80s. Um, he's a really cool design, but it was actually just a kind of gimmick. I think robotic operating buddy was kind of a stretch because playing games with Rob was actually kind of bad. Um, he was really slow and altogether a, a little bit frustrating. I think we can make some improvements. But before any game collectors sharpen their pitchforks, we're not actually going to be chopping up this nice working Rob. Instead, I've picked up a broken unit to use for this project. And I think we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We can make him better than he was before. Better stronger, faster. In any case, I want to make him a better gamey buddy like he was designed to be. And I've got a few ideas for that, so let's take a look. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So these are the upgrades I want to do. The first is the animatronics. Now, Rob's a robot, so he can move around in various ways, but his head is fixed. Uh, I want to add some new motors so that he can look around. Second is display. As a gaming accessory, Rob's going to need a display, and I think a projector would fit nicely inside his head and shine out through one of his eyes. That would be kind of cool. A camera and microphone would be useful, so we can have Rob respond to voice commands. And finally, playing games. I think using an original NES controller would be good. So I think I can achieve all of this with a Raspberry Pi, but we need to work out how to do each individual section. And before that, I wanna have a closer look on how Rob actually works. Rob works by detecting flashes of light from a TV. He's got a light sensor behind his left eye, and it's actually the same chip that's in the NES Zapper. Anyway, Rob decodes these flashes of light and translates them into movement commands. And he's got a few different ways that he can move. His hands can open and close, he can move his body up and down, and he can also rotate it around. But his head is always fixed, and that's because he needs to look at the TV to receive commands. So I've taken out all of the screws that hold Rob's head to, his, to the base, or rather Rob's neck to the base. And it's actually his neck that keeps the body on too. I'll show you how that works. The, the neck piece is screwed onto the base here, and this bottom section is keyed to the body. Um, if you look underneath, in there there's a kind of square shoulder, and when the, the neck slides through and is rotated 45 degrees, it gets locked in place. The neck is fixed to the base, and the body it rotates around it. And there's a gear here that um, engages with this gear, and that's what allows it to move around. Now this gear on our other Rob is broken, so we're gonna have to find a way to replace that, probably with a, with a servo. And actually, our main goal is to rotate Rob's head, get it to, to move around. The rotation shouldn't be too difficult. Again, we can use a servo, and instead of having Rob's neck fixed to the base, have it fixed to the servo, and it should rotate it around no problem. But getting Rob's head to tilt up and down, that's gonna be a little bit more tricky. So actually I'm gonna go and draw all of this up on the computer and see what I can come up with. Here's what I've come up with for Rob's head tilt mechanism. I've got a servo fixed to the neck and an axle fixed to the head. A pair of gears connects them together so that when the servo rotates, it drives the axle and Rob's head tilts up and down. I've also designed some other pieces for Rob. I needed a spacer to go in between Rob's shell just to give me some more room for the servos and things. Things like this can be tricky to design because I like to measure things using a vernier caliper and it can be difficult to get into all the nooks and crannies. So one little trick is to actually trace out the piece that you're trying to make onto some paper. And once you've got the outline traced out you can go in and measure all the angles nice and easily, and then transfer them over to the computer. Uh, 
And these are all our new pieces. We've got some mounts for the servos, an extension piece for the base, uh, a new neck and head, and a piece to cover the bottom. Let me show you how they all go together. They're all fixed onto the base here. And I've actually used the original screw posts and actually the original screws. So all of Rob's screws are the same size, which makes it really handy to design for. This is the servo that will rotate the body. And this is the servo that rotates Rob's neck. There we go. Uh, this piece is a spacer just to give us a little bit more room there. And I've designed it with the original screw mounts um, in their positions. Uh, wrong way around, that goes like that. Um, if I had long enough screws, I could screw all the way from the, from the bottom through uh, to the original screw post, but I don't. So I'm actually just gonna glue this in place. There's some handy platforms actually, sort of there, there and there. Uh, just a bit of hot glue will keep that on. Uh, you can see here is the mount for the Raspberry Pi. Now, it has to be angled slightly, um, and that's in order to leave room for the USB port on the back. So the USB port will fit there, and then also the DC power jack. Um, that'll go on the back too. Uh, you can see here the, the gear that engages with the body, and this is the piece that connects the head to the servo there. So this is Rob's new, uh, new neck and the bottom of his new head. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more detail about this in a moment. So this fits on there. Uh, you can see I've left a small gap for cables to come through. So there's gonna be some cables running through this tube. They're gonna come out of here and then go into the Raspberry Pi at the bottom. Now uh, the body will, will slot on top of that. It'll be independent and that will be able to be driven by this gear. Yeah, that's, that's about it for the new pieces. Um, let me show you a little bit more detail about the, the new neck, so we'll see if it, if it works how it's uh, designed to. We'll try moving up first. Okay, that seemed all right. And now let's go down. Okay, so that might be a bit too far, but if I go back to the middle, try and put it back to 90. 92. Uh, yeah, it holds his, the position quite well. So I'm only driving the servo when the knob actually changes position. When I, when I let go, um, he's being held in place just by the, the resistance of the gears. Um, it seems pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, Rob, what do you think? Do you like being able to look up and down? Okay, and compared to a stock unit here, our modified Rob looks pretty good. I think if you didn't already know, then you wouldn't necessarily tell there's something funny going on. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So my next task is to wire up the projector inside Rob's head. And I think that's going to be pretty tricky because I've got to pipe all of the cables down Rob's neck and through into his body. So next up is a lot of wiring. I'll be using this DLP evaluation kit from TI and it's designed to plug into the BeagleBone Black but since I want to use it with the Raspberry Pi I need to work out how to wire it together. So I'm going to check in on the Element 14 community and see if they can help. So straight away I found this page. It's a road test of the projector by Frederick Vandenbosch and he's posted up some details on how to get it running on the Raspberry Pi. He's um, included the edits to the config files that we'll need to make and also a wiring pinout. Um, so let's try that out. Okay, so here it is. It's a lot of wires, you can see. I'm actually using a few more than Frederick did so I can control the enable lines on the projector and be able to turn it on and off with software. Um, let me boot up the Pi and show you the image. Okay, here we are. I've got the lights off and a, a makeshift screen sort of taped to the wall, a piece of paper. It's about 75 centimeters away, about two and a half feet. I think we're getting about a 21 inch diagonal on the screen size. So quite a nice display, nice and 
nice and clear. It's a, a little bit soft in the corners. If I bring up this web page, you might be able to see the text is a little bit sharper in the center. And we do have a kind of strange curve at the top. Um, the bottom seems to be nice and straight, but at the top there's this curve. I'm not sure why, but overall the display is pretty good and I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And here we are inside a game, so yeah, pretty good. Before we start wiring up Rob's new internals, I need to take care of his crusty old externals. So I've taken all of his parts and given them a good wash in soapy water. And typical of grey plastics from the 80s, our donor Rob has gone a bit yellow. And one treatment for this is peroxide solution and UV light. It's a process called Retrobrite. And I'm doing it indoors because where I live, UV from the sun is quite rare. And after a few hours soaking in the peroxide and underneath uh, some UV lamps, our crusty old Rob shell has come out really nice and ready for his new insides. I plan to use this ribbon cable to wire up the projector in Rob's head but the servo in his neck wasn't torquey enough to move his head and bend these wires too. So I had to unpick the ribbon to make it more flexible. This made it look uh, a bit messy. The servos in his base were a lot stronger though, so the ribbon looks a lot neater down there, but after adding all of the rest of the electronics, it turned out a bit messy too. And now all those electronics are in, I can move on to my next task, which is to work out the voice control for Rob. So Rob has a microphone and a speaker hooked up, and I'm testing out some Python libraries for our voice commands. First one is Snowboy. It's an open source hot word detector, like Alexa or Hey Siri. I've got my trigger phrase set as Hey Rob, and if I run this example code, then it should play a sound when our trigger phrase is detected. Uh, hey Rob. Hey Rob. Hey, now, Snowboy is really low on CPU usage, so it can run in the background. And the idea is that we use it to trigger a more thorough speech recognition when our hot word is detected. So this script should print out what it thinks I'm saying. It only grabs little snippets of audio though, so it's meant to be run directly after our hot word is detected, but let's try it out anyway. Uh, hello Rob, how are you? Yeah, so it's not too bad. There's a little bit of delay because it's using Google's speech engine, which obviously needs a network connection. But my idea for this is to have Rob respond to a few different phrases. Uh, something like, hey Rob, take a screenshot, or hey Rob, save the game. You know, useful things that he can, he can do while we're gaming. So while I finish off this uh, speech code, um, the next thing we're gonna look at is our NES controllers. Inside these old NES controllers is a shift register, a CMOS 4021, and it takes input from the eight buttons and allows you to read them with just three wires, plus power and ground. I wrote an Arduino program to read these shift registers and convert them into a pair of USB joysticks for the Raspberry Pi to use. But I had trouble getting both controllers working they were fine in Windows, but the Raspberry Pi didn't seem to like having two USB joysticks with the same name, even though they had different IDs. To get around this, I just made Player 1 a keyboard and Player 2 a USB controller, and that seemed to work fine. To build the adapter itself, I took two plugs from some controller extension cables and designed a case around it. I tried to make the case fit Rob's look, and one of the ways I did this was with the coiled cable. I made this by tightly wrapping the cable around a pencil and hitting it with a heat gun for about 10 seconds and then letting it cool down. And this gave me this really cool kind of springy effect. I also put some text on the front, uh, player one and player two. And this piece was 3D printed uh, in that orientation, which gave me a really smooth surface on the front. And I indented the numbers one millimeter below the surface. 
And this allowed me to take a, a crayon and melt the wax into the numbers. And then after scraping it off and cleaning it up a little bit, you get this really nice lettering effect. And this is Rob pretty much completely finished. So let's have a look at some of his features. So this is a demo of Rob's new animatronics. He can move his head and his body and he can also move them together and also tilt his head down and back up and also because his shoulder piece is actually stock it can still do all the same actions that he used to be able to do so he can move, move his body down and move it up and also close his hands and open them and this is useful when we're adjusting the picture because I can use Rob's head tilt to get the frame in the right place. And here's an example of playing a game. So here's one of my favourite features actually. It's a a voice activated controller that I've written in Python. It uses uInput and Snowboy. And first of all, it sets up a virtual gamepad with two buttons and then turns Rob's LED on so that we can use it later to see when we've detected a keyword. And then here we have our functions that we perform when our keyword's detected. So we have four, one for pressing A, one for pressing B, one for releasing A and one for releasing B. Let's try it out and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Rob, press A. <laughs> so it works. Uh, release A. Rob, press B. Okay, this one might be more tricky. Uh, Rob, press A. Release A. Rob, press B. Okay, he's coming to get me. Release B. <laughs> Rob, press B. Oh, it works really well. All right, sorry. A bit cornered. Uh, Rob, press A. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Press A. Oh. Uh, Rob, press B. Release B. Press B. Oh no! Okay, so when it does get confused between A and B, you get killed. Press A. Oh! Press B. Release B. Uh, press B. No! Maybe a few bugs to work out still. And that's just about it for our Rob Reborn project. And I think we accomplished most of what we set out to do. Um, apart from maybe the camera, uh, I didn't have time to fully integrate it into Rob's head. So I just built a kind of monocle for now that can sit on there, but it'd be nice to have it fully built in. If I was to revisit the project, then I'd like to address Rob's uh, projector wiring. It'd be nice to find maybe a more flexible cable or even a stronger motor for his neck joint. Is there anything that you'd like to have seen added to Rob? Let me know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents, where you'll also find all of the code and files that are used for Rob's project. Thanks for watching. Wago 221 series lever nuts. Compact splicing connectors for all wire types. Available in sizes of 24 to 12 gauge or 20 to 10 gauge. Quickly connect wires of different sizes using two, three, and five wire connectors without tools. Wiring is simple. Strip the wire, open the clamp, insert the wire, and close the clamp. Transparent housing helps ensure you can verify a strong connection, and the two easily accessible test ports simplify testing, even when installed. Applications include electric blinds, door and gate controls, lighting systems, motors, 
and air conditioners. Learn more at element14.com.